So let's just dig right in here. Obviously, this is a big story about your defrocking. How did you find out about this? Well, technically, I, I haven't gotten any f- official notification of it. Uh, I found out about it through Catholic News Agency. And my question to them is, how did you guys find out about it before I did? And I'm waiting for an answer to that. But it's essentially, Billy, it doesn't matter because we've known for 20 years uh, that that there are bishops in the church that, that hate our work. Uh, they're uncomfortable when I put so much priority on abortion. Uh, one bishop told me one time, Father Frank, you're too aggressive on abortion. So I said, well, well, as soon as abortion stops being aggressive on the little babies that it dismembers and decapitates, then you come and talk to me. But otherwise, in a very positive spirit, as you know, and we've interacted over the years, uh, we're just asking the church to be more vocal on abortion. We're helping the priests to do that. We're giving them preaching uh, tools. We're, we're, we're giving, we head up the largest ministry for healing after abortion. As you know, Rachel's Vineyard, uh, Silent No More, the stories of those that have had abortions. We show compassion to them. Uh, we help the Vatican. We help the Vatican with the, the Holy See mission to the United Nations. Uh, we, we, we help that office to function, as a matter of fact. We work with the Secretariat of State defending the unborn at the United Nations. Um, We just have this multifaceted work. Now, why would some in the church oppose it? Well, the bishops have said, we don't like the emphasis you put on abortion. All right. We don't like the politics. We don't like you supporting pro-life candidates. What do they want me to do? Support pro-abortion candidates like some of them do? No, thanks. You know, Uh, but everything that we've taught and, and done has been in accord with the teachings of the church. So this is what gets, you know, and they've tried to cancel me in various ways. They tried first by saying, well, you can't be full-time director of priest's wife. We need you back in a parish. And I said, well, I'm sorry, but this is my conscience. This is my vocation. Uh, I want the blessing. I've had the blessing of the church to do it. Why won't you let a priest do full-time pro-life work? Well, eventually they had to, you know, let me, let me continue doing that. Then they tried to discredit the organization itself. They raised questions about the finances. We knocked that down real fast. We have all kinds of audits showing we're in good financial management. So the only thing can left- I, can I, I just want to jump in really quick on this because it's interesting when, when you look at what has happened here, you're saying you haven't heard anything. Have you heard anything at all, just to clarify, about any sort of process being raised against you that would lead to this? Oh, we know that they've been working on this, except that it's, uh, it, yeah, in other words, we've had communications. We know that the bishop, it's been five years that since this Bishop Zurich of Amarillo, he's one of the ringleaders in all of this, uh, has been trying to get me out of the, the priesthood. So we've had all kinds of communications back and forth, but the process has been a one-sided narrative. They don't listen they pretend, even in their public statement now, they pretend that, oh, Father Frank's been given, been given many opportunities to defend himself, as if we haven't been defending ourselves and doing so for 20 years. Um, they're being so disingenuous about this. They don't listen to our concerns. Um, it's a one-sided effort to just cancel out what we are trying to do. One of the things that has come up in the coverage of this is a claim among at least one attorney um, and priest that in order for this to come down from the Vatican in the way that it did with no appeal, that something like that would have to come from the Pope himself. It would have to come from very high. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that it's it's from the Pope. And in fact, we also know the Pope has been advised to um, do a more peaceful solution, which is put me under (laughs) the uh, authority of a more supportive bishop. Rather than a bishop that wants to persecute me, like Patrick Zurich, put me under a favorable bishop that will support my work. We have bishops who are willing to receive me. And Billy, here's the amazing thing. The same Vatican, the same congregation for clergy that issued this this, this document now, which was signed off by the Pope, uh, said two years, three years ago, they authorized me to be transferred to another diocese under a, a supportive bishop. They themselves dismissed all these this nonsense uh, 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 accusations about, oh, Father Frank is saying inappropriate things and whatnot. They dismissed the, 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 the uh, um, complaints of Bishop Zurich. They authorized me to be under a different diocese. But then the thing that got in the way was they also said, oh, well, he has to spend half his time in the diocese. He could spend half his time doing pro-life work. 
again, I want to appeal to, there is an appeal to this, even if the Pope signs off on it, and it's to the people of God. It's to your listeners. It's to the folks that are joining us right now. And here's my appeal to them. If the work we're doing is worthy work and worthy of support, then keep supporting it and let's keep doing it together. The, the value of this work doesn't come from a letter from the Pope. And the value of this work isn't erased by a letter from the Pope. The value of this work is that, Billy, people like you, people like your audience, people who are atheists, I'm getting more support from pro-life atheists than from pro-life bishops. We know that we have to save these babies and we have to have compassion for their moms and their dads. And we're going to keep serving them. And if the church is uncomfortable with that, honestly, and I don't say this out of any disrespect, but honestly, it's their problem, not mine. I'm at so peace. what? Well, what happens? So let's say there is no appeal within the church. You right. are not allowed to continue being a priest in the Catholic Church. What what happens then to you and to the ministry? What do you plan to do? The ministry is fine because you know we know how to encourage priests to uh, preach about abortion. I'm not walking in there doing the preaching for them. I'm providing them the talking points. I'm providing them the resources, and we've built up those resources over three decades. And that stuff is strong. We have a team. I'm not acting on my own. We have a team. Priests for Life has a team of 50 people. It includes Rachel's Vineyard, Silent No More, uh, all of the activities and the publishing. We have a publishing arm. The work is going to be fine. The work is going to continue. And so will I. Uh, and, and you know, the, the, this idea that any of this is permanent in terms of a dismissal from the priesthood is simply incorrect because we're going to continue. I've said, I use this analogy. If the Pope shuts a door in front of me, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be standing right on the other side of that door and I'm going to be knocking. I'm going to ask him to reopen it because the people of God are speaking up about this. You know, I want to encourage people in a respectful way, speak to your bishop, tell them, hey, if you believe we're doing good work, hey, Father's doing good work, you know, and um, we support it. Then there will be a next pope and the next pope can reinstate me. We're going to keep, we're not going anywhere. I'm not going to be one of those people that, you know, walks away, rebels against the church. You know, I, I'm called to be a priest. I'm going to stick with that. I'm called to be a pro-life leader. I'm going to stick with that, too. You know, one of the things, and, and I want to talk about this for, for two reasons, but one of the things that you speculated might be at the baseline of this was a tweet or a couple of tweets you sent out, some political tweets about pro-choice Democrats. I know there was one about Biden, the Lord's name being used in vain, allegedly, in one of those, one of those tweets. I, I bring that yeah. up. I want you to respond to that, but I also bring it up because – even if that's true and that all happened and, and there's frustration over that, that could be dealt with. But but how do you then respond in light of that to the fact that there are pro-choice Democrats, the president, Nancy Pelosi and others who are able to say public things against the church and still retain their Catholic title? Because there are powers in the church that want it that way. It just boils down to that. You know, Dan Bongino, whom I'm sure many of us listen to, uh, <clears throat> says, you know, it's not that it's so much hypocrisy. It is hypocrisy. You treat one, you know, them this way and you treat me a different way. But he calls it hierarchy. It's it's just the exercise of raw power. I choose to support those that are in favor of abortion, this is what some of these bishops are doing, and 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 uh, uh, I want to I want to sideline or punish those that are being too vocal on pro life because they want to control. Really, what's at the heart of this is who's going to control the Catholic narrative on abortion, and the bishops are intent on doing it their way, and uh, we're going to continue doing it in a way that we say is consistent with Catholic teaching, but they don't just, they don't like the politics. These other things are just an excuse. Uh, uh, these, these, oh, Father Frank used a bad word or whatever. Those are things are just excuses they're using. And this other call is coming in for me right now. No problem. I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us today. God bless you. Thanks, Billy. <laughs>